I'm going to bring up uh, an old friend of mine, a member of the Black Panther Party and now a storyteller, and his name is Mike McCarty. And uh, oh, stay tuned to uh, 88.7 right here on the left end of your dial because after Mike McCarty, we're going to have uh, some people coming up from uh, an organization working to br help uh, bring about some justice and the restoration of democracy in Honduras. And then a little bit later, we're going to have members of the... Uh, the famed uh, Rising Up Angry organization who are in town for their 40th anniversary. Right so on. good morning to you, Michael McCarty. Good morning, Mike. How you doing this morning? It's I'm doing good, and it's always a pleasure to have you up here on my right or my left. <laughs> uh, you're one hell of a guy. And uh, you, what brings you to town this time? Well, this time I'm here to tape some stories. I'm taping some stories um, in Evanston this weekend story um, about the power of love, using love to overcome racism and hostility, a story about my mother who was an inspiration in my life, and a story about my getting my high school diploma from uh, St. Ignatius after 39 years. Well, we told that story uh, last summer, I think. You were in town when St. Ignatius finally decided to give you uh, your diploma after kicking you out for a walkout uh, where you demanded simple things like uh, more teaching about, uh, the, you know, black, black history, history mm -hmm. et cetera, yep, et cetera. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I, you know, I've got a big lineup, so I can't keep you up here for an hour, but how about you tell us a little story? i got to share this story. I just got back from five and a half weeks in South America. I was in Argentina, Chile, and Uruguay telling stories. One of the highlights of the trip was this French high school in Buenos Aires who designed a curriculum around my life to study um, re relationships, uh, uh, race relations in the United States and the black power movements of the 60s and 70s. Think about that. Me, guy from west side of Chicago, got kicked out of high school. If they only knew the truth <laughs> about you. <laughs> one of the, and one of the great things, they had to, they had mm -hmm. to take tests about my life. All right, they had to write papers about my life. Check this out. And one of the great things, one of, one of the questions, and this is really touching. Where's me. the line so we can get in this program? <laughs> how, how my mother influenced me oh, in nice. my life. Are you going to tell us how your mom influenced you? My mother told me that if you could read, you can do anything. And she made me believe that I could do anything I put my mind to. She told me that, and I believe her. Well, you turned out great. So do you got a you got a tale or story like uh, you're a storyteller these oh, days? Oh yeah, I'm always. I, I gotta say, things. he used to be a great acupuncturist, <laughs> and he probably still is. Uh, but it's been a while since you stuck needles in me. Yep. yep. Uh, usually we just talk about, uh, you know, we talk about a lot of stuff, and uh, it's you know you come through town uh, every six months, every four months. You visit your daughter, who's turned out to be a wonderful teacher. Yes, she is. Uh, you always bring in a whole lot of people who've been involved, past and present, in. Uh, activism, and, uh, and then you go off and you tell stories. I guess that helps pay the bill. So that's, that's what I got, do. You got a story for okay, us. Okay, I, I don't remember if I told you all this one before, but heck, it's well, good. You chances hear of it again. the same people hearing <laughs> it are slim. <laughs> this is a Nasruddin tale. Um, once, Nasruddin was sitting on his porch. He hears all this, this rustling and dustling. He sees these people marching, and he says, where are you going? What's going on? Haven't you heard? We're at war, and we're going to war. He said, well, I've heard about these battles. I've heard about this war. I want to go with you. He said, yeah, we're always looking for people to go to war. So he gets right in front of the line, gets to the battlefield. First person to get wounded, Nasrud, an arrow, bam, straight to the forehead. The doctor comes and says, oh, my, this is critical. I have to determine whether or not the arrow has pierced his brain. Amazingly, Nasruddin is conscious. He says, doctor, pull the arrow out. You don't have to worry. What do you mean? If I had any brains, would I have come to this stupid war? <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Let's have a big round of applause for Michael right, McCarty. Right. Always a pleasure to have you. My pleasure, Mike. <laughs>